Hey guys, been a while since I did one of these, but I'm back now from vacation and I want to take a couple minutes here and turn back the clock. Let's turn back the clock to a special year, 2004, and I want to showcase a few cards here from a set that, you ready for this, was $200 a pack in 2004, so late August 2004. Fleer upgraded the EX brand, which many of you will know, a very famous brand from the late 90s all the way up to, you know, 2004 here. And they upgraded that EX brand into a $200 a pack mega premium brand. Uh, these were hobby only. Uh, each pack contained seven cards, four base cards, a serial numbered rookie card, an auto card, and a game used patch card. So this would, this would be the final year of the coveted Essential Credentials Parallels. And actually, as I mentioned, EX as a brand altogether because Fleer went out of business and went bankrupt in 2005. So let me show a card here. This is a Pedro Martinez Essential Credentials Future. And this one is numbered to 61, as you can see there. Now, the thing with these is many of these that are out there are missing serial numbers. And a lot of that has to do with, uh, and when I say many of these, not just this Pedro card, but across the three sports, football, basketball, baseball, a lot of these numbered cards in the set, like the essential credentials, there's a bunch of them out there that are unnumbered. And that's due to copies getting out through bankruptcy, quality control copies. Now they're not fake cards, but they're just, you know, the same card, but it's just gonna be missing the serial numbers. And I have one of those that I'll show here in a minute. So obviously if you can find the ones that have the serial numbers, those are the preferred ones. Uh, but I, as you'll see here, I'm not opposed to certain ones that are missing the serial numbers and I'll go into that in a second. But so that's the Pedro one now. As you may know, uh, with Essential Credentials and all the sets, they have an Essential Credentials future and a now. And the serial numbering is going to vary. So like with, with uh, Pedro here, it's numbered to, like I said, 61. And the other one is going to be numbered to 5 in, the, in this set here by him because everyone's going to add up to 66. So every player, whatever the numbering is on the future, you're going to add that up to 66. So whatever that comes out to be, and that's what, what the, the now is gonna be. So basically there's 66 essential credentials for each player in the set, and it's just gonna be divided by two. So let me show you here, let's switch sports. We're gonna go over to Tom Brady, beautiful design. And, and I also wanted to say that too, I, I feel like this is one of the sets of EX that gets overlooked a little bit because you know, there's so, very famous ones like in, um, you know, for baseball 98, where you have the, you know, the, the essential credentials that are go for huge dollars and you have the, the green one and the, you know, the, the kind of the purple, purple, pink one, red, pink, whatever you want to kind of call that coloring. But, you know, there's the, the late nineties, like 98, they get most of the, the praise, I think. Uh, but as you see here, they went all the way into 2004 and uh, I, I really like some of these designs like this in the uh, 2000. So it's called 90s cards, but really, you know, when I talk 90s cards, for most of the sets and the player runs and stuff, I'm going all the way into like the mid 2000s, 2004, 2005. And for, I know a lot of other collectors that collect certain players um, that go well in, you know, well further into that, that collect all the way up into 2007, 2008. So when I say 90s cards, it's really that period of the late 90s, mid late 90s, all the way up to the mid 2000s. It's 10 year, really a 10 year stretch where I really love those cards. So with Brady here, this is the base card. Now that's the other thing about EX. Um, the base cards in the EX sets, they, they, look, they look like chase cards that you'd see now. I mean, this is a base card. Uh, this SGC 9.5, man, these are very difficult to grade as you could tell by the design. You don't see many high grades on these cards. Um, so this being a 9.5, this one I had graded myself 
I, I bought this one ungraded off of eBay back in the day and, and sent it in. So as you see here, you know, base card. Now, a huge card is sort of this one. So this is the, the Brady Essential Credentials Now that is normally numbered to 19. And so this was graded, again, I had this card graded by Beckett myself. Uh, one of the, I think the only card I've ever sent into Beckett. Because PSA doesn't grade the ones, as you see here, that are missing the serial number. So as I was talking about earlier, this Brady is not serial numbered, even though it should have been. So this was likely one that got out after the bankruptcy. It was a quality control copy that FLIR had, and, and it just got out. This card is actually labeled wrong by Beckett. They should put on this, if you see the label, they put that it's numbered to, uh, or it's number 19, and then it says Tom Brady out of 19. It's not serial numbered. So normally it is out of 19, but they should have put missing serial number on this, which they didn't do. So not that I'm going to sell this card anytime soon. If I ever do, it will be down, way down the road. But when the time would come that I would sell this, you know, in my opinion, it's very important that, like if I put it up on eBay, that in the listing title, I think it's um, you know ethical to put that it's missing the serial number. You know, people will see that anyway, but Beckett did not label that correctly. But here's the thing. I still find these cards really highly collectible, especially this one where there's only 19 of them that were ever serial numbered. So it's not like we're talking about a card that was serial numbered to 100 or 500 or 1,000, and then you're, you're finding a copy that has no serial number. They're different. But with 19 of them only out there, you know, this one here, I couldn't, I'd imagine they probably didn't make too many for the quality control copies. So again, just an awesome looking card and you would never expect, you know, if you were selling this card, you would never accept, expect to get a selling price anywhere near the serial number once. So I would obviously admit that, you know, you never, you never pay, in my opinion, the same amount for a, a backdoored copy or bankruptcy copy, quality control copy, whatever you want to call it as you would for one that has a serial number on it. But still, in my opinion, an awesome card to have. It's the same exact card. It looks the same, got the awesome, same design to it and everything. Uh, it's just missing that serial number. And then finally, this, this is a big recent pickup of mine. This, similar to the one we saw earlier. So we saw the Essential Credentials Future numbered to 40 what was it? No, 61. And now this one, this is the essential credentials now of Pedro in a very special year, obviously 2004 when they won the World Series. And this one's numbered to five. So number five of five. This is Pedro's rarest essential credential card across all the years. At least I, I think so. And from the World Series winning year. So side by side, you know, not a huge difference in the cards. One basically has the red and one has the blue. So there they are next to each other. We'll put some Brady's up there. You know, so what do you what do you guys think? What do you guys think about, I guess first off, um, that the, these were 200 bucks a pack. See, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't buying packs. I wasn't buying anything in 2004 other than just singles off of eBay. I had no clue about what was coming out for new products or anything like that, so. This was all news to me when I learned about it, that they were going for $200 a pack. Any of you guys out there that were buying cards in 2004, what did you think? Did you see these things, 200 bucks a pack at the, at the hobby shops? Pretty crazy. Uh, and you know, one last thing too, with especially with the, uh, the bankruptcy copy here or the whatever you want to call it, quality control copy. I, I find it interesting because there's a lot of negativity around these type of cards from the you know 90s and early 2000s where they're again authentic cards they're the real deal they just weren't in the packs you know they got out after the fact and people really are kind of down on a lot of people are down on that they they think they're crap i've heard even people calling them fake cards and i think people go a little too far with that because if you think back on the history of the hobby and some of the vintage cards here's a good example 1961 tops dice game cards right there's like, at least with Mickey Mantle, there's I think four, three or four that have ever surfaced. And if you know the history of those, they were a test issue that never got out. They were meant to be out. They somehow escaped from the tops 
and only again maybe four of them got out four sets of them and pound for pound it's probably mickey mantle's most expensive card i think like a psa one goes for four hundred thousand bucks or something crazy like that so clearly with vintage cards the cards that never got into packs but still somehow got out you know they have a huge collector base or you know they go for big money when they get out but with the 90s and the 2000s when you have cards that like this brady card where it's missing a serial number uh, it's still the real card uh it's really for some people they have a strong negativity towards it so i get it like i said i don't expect one without the serial to sell for really anywhere close to the serial number version but I still think they're collectible, depending on the card and the player. Anyway, love to hear your thoughts in the comments, guys. Thanks for watching this one. Be back with another one soon.